Hey, uh, but welcome here. We have Brian, Tom, and Michael. Let's give a big, big hand for them. Hey! Thank you. Now, ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask some questions with our panel discussion here. If you guys have questions, feel free to raise your hand. I will I'll call on you, and then we'll just uh, go for about uh, 20 minutes or so and uh, see where it goes. So, you know, obviously, you know, with uh, the reason you're here today, um, you know, obviously a story of preteens, you know, a short journey of being a preteen, journey of being a teenager. Let's start it off this way. Think back when all of you were teenagers. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, see, I asked the hard one first. I think it's easier after this. This is brutal. Think about when you were a teenager and something that you went, you know what, I want to tell me as a teenager now about some advice. Oh, advice? Yeah, and feel free to use the uh, microphone that's right in front of you as well. It's a great question. Loudly. Brian. Uh oh. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Um, advice I would give myself. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, and my answer is going to be nearly impossible in the sense that uh, I worried a lot as a kid. And if I could tell my younger self, uh, I would say not to worry as much, not to be. Um, not to be shackled by anxiety, uh, that it will all work out if you, like Rockley, work hard, are clear about your dream. And that doesn't mean we all are at all times of our lives. Uh, often we're not, especially when we're a teen, we're not very clear and it's a little muddled and you're like, oh. But at some point in your life, that dream or that goal will be vivid and it will really start to form. And at that point, um, you go for it with everything you got. Um, but yeah, I would tell my younger self um, not to be shackled by uh, anxiety and worry because I spent a lot of time worrying about my future and, um, and I wish I didn't. And again, I think it's, it's natural to do that s to some degree, um, but don't let it, don't let it rule your, your world. Uh, you know, that's, it's really good because of, you don't know what the future is and stuff, but I, I spent a lot of time worrying too. I think, I think Brian kind of nailed it on the head. Like, what advice would you really give yourself? Like, you know, invest in Apple stock or, you know, like, uh, you know something like that. I, I don't know. But yeah, ang worrying about stuff doesn't make it better. That, so let it go. You're, everything's going to be just fine, you know? So that's, that would be my advice. All right, Michael. Well, my advice, uh, I, I love everything that my, that my colleagues and friends have said, my esteemed colleagues and friends have said. I, I would say also, you know, um, uh, be kind, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I spent a lot of time, I don't think that I was, but I know I spent a lot of time th worried about whether or not I was cool. Uh, and that's kind of something that I probably couldn't control so much, but I could have controlled and I can control uh, being kind. So be kind. And then also the biggest thing I think for me that um, uh, I still try to remind, I, I remind myself of that also, but I, I, I do, a, I try to do a pretty good job of being kind lately, uh, but is to enjoy this moment right now uh, for everything it's worth. You know, whatever job you're doing, do it the best you can. I did also spend an awful long time doing jobs on my way to getting to the job I really wanted. Um, and it made it so that the job I was doing was like not top on the list of, the of, of what was important to me. And I, I don't know, I got advice once. Michael Ritchie, who was the artistic director for a theater company that I worked for for a while, uh, said once, you know, if you're the if you're the spotlight guy, be the best spotlight guy anyone's ever met, and then the next like someone will notice, people will appreciate. Everyone loves the guy that loves his work, and or her work or their work. And when that when you are that person, 
then you move into opportunities open themselves right up to you and you do the next thing and you do that to the best of your ability and you enjoy it because there's there's satisfaction and joy that comes from working hard and being cool and being good and being kind and doing all those things and they all kind of feed on each other if you're happy we're happy uh, and that's all. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I agree. In my youth, I think I spent a lot more time thinking about me, uh, and I should have spent more time thinking about other people. So there you go. Yeah, he's such a jerk. <laughs> nice. I just want to tandem that by saying, um, especially if you're a young person in here, and there's a few of you, uh, people recognize when you care enough about yourself. And if they see that you care about your future, if they see that you care about your dreams and your goals and that you're working hard, people will lift you up. They will want to help you. Um, and what Michael said is like, if, you do, if you're doing your best, that is recognized. Um, and people will cheer you on and help you. Also, I know Tom kind of jokingly said, you know, I would have invested in Apple stock. This is a very, <laughs> this, Rockley's not known for his financial prowess. No, yeah. But Bitcoin, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, but what I will say, and I think it's, you know, and, and this is just a, a prompt from this amazing question, but I will say, and again, this is especially for the younger people, do not, and this is twice I've used the word shackled, but do not get shackled by debt. Do not get shackled by debt. It will, it will, it will crush you, um, and especially when you're younger, because there's a thing called compounded interest <laughs> and it will build on itself and it will be really hard to get out of that very deep hole. So if you're a young person and you are starting a job, my suggestion would be to save 30% of that dollar that you make, 30 cents, goes into a long-term fund, like a long-term, like, I know, I know, this is crazy, Susie Ormond, in the house. Um, <laughs> And 30% goes into maybe saving for a cool toy that you can't afford, but you, you're like, you're, you're gunning for it, right? Like, I'm gonna get that you know, new Sony PlayStation. And then 40%, you can do whatever you want. You can buy candy, you can, whatever, up to your parents. But, um, <laughs> but, but, I mean, I'm serious, and I know it's like a real pivot from Naruto, and I apologize, but it is so important to start saving younger. That is, the game that they're all playing. That is the politics that they're all playing. And everyone yells and screams about corporations and whatever, but if you're part of the system of saving, investing, and gaining money from the money that you have, that's the trick. And I know, I pivoted, these guys are laughing at me hard, I'm sorry. but I would have told my younger self that too, um, because that is the game, and you can win that game if you start saving and investing also, early. If you're not you're not That's clappable. Debt. You guys can clap if you want. A large, a large part of anxiety that you have as an adult is because of debt. So if you can avoid that pitfall, do not get in debt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Bitcoin. No, I'm kidding. All right, thanks. That's all the time we got for you. Uh, you never knew at Lone Icon you'd have financial advice. <laughs> Or working artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the uh, craft of being a voiceover artist. Uh, I know uh, Michael mentioned, you know, uh, the, his theater experience. He has a doctorate actually in educational theater. Um, so obviously, you know, somebody, you know, in vision theater. What are some tips that you have learned from being live on stage that help you in your voice acting career? Uh, and that's for the entire. Is that for, uh, and, but Dr. Yurchek will start. Uh, <laughs> sorry, the, uh, Dr. Yurchek, could you? The, um, the, uh, so being live on stage, you know, I mean, voice acting is acting. It's acting first, right? And so, um, honestly, the best thing about being live on stage and working that way is you have to listen. Um, and that's ironic, see? See, see? That's ironic because most of what we do uh, for this show, uh, for Naruto, uh, we did our own in a booth by ourselves. You had a, uh, the director there, but uh, and and so you know you would you, you weren't playing off of another actor. But listening is this critical part of what we do because you are always in response. Right? All the acting that we do is in response. So what am I responding to in this moment, and how do I? 
how would I play if someone were saying it to me or if someone were doing it to me or if something was happening around me? So uh, I think the listening part of being on stage uh, is a critical thing that, uh, that I'll always remember. And I always, I incorporate all the time. Yeah, I, you know, I get, we get asked a lot, like, what's it to be a voice actor? And I, there's very few people that I know there, there are people that wanted to work in voice. I always thought it would be fun to be in cartoons when I was a little kid. Um, but I just went down the actor road, and this is just happens to be the one thing that kind of I got a little success with. And, you know, get to come to places like this and meet all you great people. Uh, it's, it, it was, that was more of an accident. I would be happy to be on a sitcom, or I'd be happy to be making movies. I'd be happy to be on a radio show or podcast. <laughs> You know, it's just it, it just turned out that the voice thing kind of this kind of worked out for us. And um, so it's always strange to me when you go, well, how do you be a voice actor? I'm like, you become an actor and then maybe somebody will hire, hire you on a voice job and then maybe you'll be good at it. And then all the other stuff happens. But, uh, you know, I did. I did commercials, I worked at conventions, you know, like trying to get people to come to the booth, you know, dress up as a, as a thing. I did cruise ships, I did uh, improv comedy, a lot of improv comedy. Um, I did everything. I did every kind of weird acting job you can imagine, and a lot of these guys did. Uh, this, did this exact same thing, and then you just get this one opportunity to do this voice, and then you have a path laid out for you. So that's, so it, it's, for, to me, it's all the same. It's all one thing, so. I, uh, I used my time talking about finances and stuff, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no. He's gonna talk about stocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a stock I've been looking at lately. No, um, I, uh, yeah, I, look, there's two things. I used to clean tuxedo shoes. Um, I used to scrub the grills of restaurant, you know, the things above the, the grill. Um, and now here I am. And the reason I say that, and this has nothing to do with your question, is dreams do come true. Dreams do come true. And again, I'm going to direct this to everyone, not just the young people, but dreams do come true. And so whatever that is, it doesn't have to be voice acting or whatever. Um, I, we were all just kids just like you. I'm from Buffalo, you know, whatever. And Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, Boston. But uh, yeah, and so I will say, bringing it back to the question, is there's, a, there's an improv rule. That's an awesome rule. It's like you say yes and. Yes and. And if you use that in life, um, that's pretty awesome. You're open to opportunities. You're open to see what's going to happen. You say yes and. Um, and if you play that way, uh, more often than not, life will continue to surprise you. It will continue to reward you with the courage to say yes and. Anyway. Yes, yes and. Yes, and. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about uh, preparing for a uh, role. Um, you know, Brian, you, uh, I think I read that you uh, worked with Jim Carrey. Yeah. Um, and Jim Carrey, they talked about when he was in, in Andy Kaufman, he was Andy Kaufman the entire time, 24-7. Mm. Um, how do you, all for you on the panel, prepare for a role? What do you get when you're doing that, that voiceover in an uh, what we're talking about today? What did you get before you saw it, and how did you kind of prepare for that character? Well, that's where you get into, there's different styles of acting. There's different uh, ways to prepare. A lot of people like to do a lot of research and background and things like that. We don't get to see the script before the day of. And so the skills that we use in the booth are different than, like if you were going to do a movie and you got a chance to research and re really get through into the script and figure out what's going on. The skills that make you a su successful voiceover person is be able to look at the text with a little bit of direction from the director and then turn that into uh, your character and then have that be, create that powerful impact when you really only had two, three minutes to prepare. Um, and that's a, that is kind of an improv thing. I think it's an improv skill, being able to just come up with something right away, make a strong choice, make a strong choice, stick with it, and then that'll kind of take you through it. Uh, so, so that's a very, so you kind of talk about two different kind of acting 
actor thing kind of thing, Jim Carrey staying in character the entire time. Uh, I've worked with people like that. I, I, I know, I'm somebody that can be in character on stage, ready to go. I won't crack, I won't laugh. However, you're always safe with me. My punch is never gonna touch your chin. I can trust the person that I'm working with on act, uh, uh, across from me. That kind of, I'm not a big fan of that kind of Jim Carrey. He's a talent, but that would drive me nuts if he stayed in character 24. Because sometimes you want to go, hey, can you just take a step forward on that? Because, you know, I, I can't move right. Or whatever, whatever the business that you need to do as two actors to make this scene happen for that director, uh, you want to be able to just go, dude, I'm talking to Brian now. I'm not talking to his character. I, we just need, it's just a matter of business, you know? Uh, so I get a little worried, especially if you have a fight scene <laughs> uh, with somebody that is way into character like that. And again, it's a totally different kind of acting. God bless them if that works for you. Most of the time when you're in acting school, FYI, they'll say, take whatever works for you. And some people need that intense, you know, really get into the character and other people don't. I'm more on the other end because I did a lot of improv comedy, so everything was like, you know, be a pirate and you just throw yourself into it. I don't have to think about it. You know, if you want to get into some depth, then you do a lot more research, but. I thought you were going to do the pirate for everyone. Yeah, no, we were waiting for the pirate. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can do a pirate and just go right into that voice and that's what I'm going to be. And then I realized, hey, can I maintain that for 18 seasons? Probably not. <laughs> Because I made a bad choice with a voice that'll hurt my my throat, you know. Uh, all right, all right. So that's I think. Uh, yeah, we get. We get. Wait, you have another one? Uh, do we have questions from the audience? Of course. There we go. I'll let Michael go first. Hey, yeah. uh, in the back here, I'm, and now now our security guard over here is a big fan. Talking about it all morning. Do you like it? Do you like it? Like like, oh, like overall? The show or just acting? Like acting in general. Yeah. Oh, it's the greatest job in the whole freaking world. We like it. Yeah, we like, yeah, we like it. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The problem is we like it. We like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like it. Yeah, we like it. Getting to do it is the frustration of your life. You know, when you're on set, when you're acting, when you're in the booth, when you're doing that thing, it is so much fun. There are times when you're challenged, but the worst day that I've ever had acting beats every other day that I've done in every other job. Yeah. You know. So it, it is, it is a, one of those things that can be, the career part of it can be very frustrating, getting the opportunity to act, but once you're there, that is the greatest thing. Ironically, oh. right, we, we, the, the thing is, you don't get paid for the work, for the hard part. The hard part is the hustle, yeah. and the hard part is staying sane during the weeks and months and years when work is thin, um, and having side jobs, and training and staying sharp and being ready for when those opportunities come that stuff is free you don't get paid for it at all the days you work you get paid and you get paid pretty well but that part you do for free and so it's like that's the ultimate irony like yes we love it and and there's you know if i'm being totally honest it's uh it, the the it's the work it's not the work it's the grind and the grind is tough you're looking at three guys though who have done it this for a long time uh people often i teach a lot and so uh, a lot of people will I, I meet people who have just moved to los angeles or just decided to get into voiceover or what have you and they say you know well i'm going to give myself six months or i'm going to give myself a year or whatever and it's just like my goodness, you know, it just, you, you don't, I, you, you, in six months, you won't even, we will barely have finished this conversation, you know, <laughs> like, like, you know, you, Brian, Brian will barely have finished giving you tax advice, you know, so it's a, you need, it's a long game, it's a, it's a, mar yeah, life, you right? give it your whole, t yeah, it's, it's everything, it because it's a marathon and, and you just do it, but the short answer is yes, and, and we've, you know, again, it's like, we've never done anything else either, and also, we've all done a million other things, you know, so it's, uh, it's all of that. But yeah, I, I, I highly recommend and also, you know, stay strong. <laughs> yeah. I just have to ask, me and my brothers, they were playing on new anime, I was trying to do a voice actor. So I just wanted to see how it was. Well, yeah. I, I will say this, right now, uh, more than any other time, the opportunity to do that is, 
it's so easy. The, 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 the bar for entry is so low because we all have this thing in our pocket that is a recorder, it's an edit booth, it's a sound bay, it's a video camera, it can, you know, and you can then take that thing and get an audience. You can put it up on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. That, in the whole history of the human condition, no one has had greater access from I have an idea to I can get somebody else to look at it. You know, uh, you used to have to translate it into a, you know, write something and get somebody to produce it and put it up on stage or get it filmed. And, and uh, all of this stuff now we have in our pocket with a cell phone. And I know cell phone is, that's a pretty low barrier to entry, but I, I know there's a lot of kids that want cell phones that their parents won't let them have them. So I realize that is a, that is a condition uh, that right now seems, oh, that's a big deal to get a cell phone. But we, you have never had more access than ever before than right now in this point in history. So. Yeah. Just, I'll just go ahead. I'm going to clip this because I'm, I'm hearing a dream uh, <laughs> in the making. Um, and I will say that you have to do it, right? I mean, if this is what's in your heart, you have to try. Um, but just be aware that, like Rockley, it's, it's hard work. Like, no dreams come easy. And if you can wrap your head around that part of it, and mind you, we've all heard, like, the, the crazy easy magic wand success story, right? There's one of 20,000 people that, that nail that, like the lottery, right? But really, most people's dreams come true because they're working their butts off, right? So I think if you can wrap your head around that part of it and do something five to six days a week towards your goal, towards your dream, um, then you will, you, will fur, you will go further down the path, right? Closer to your dream. And your dream might change. Your, your dream might not look exactly how you initially, creatively, you know, thought of it. Because, like, I think that's for all of us. Like, that's our dream, our initial, like, idea of, like, Hollywood and performing. Like, that might have changed. Like, like Tom said, like, I didn't know I was going to get on this hit show, Naruto. And, like, you know, I was doing all this acting. But this is what hit. Um, but if you do something every day towards your dream, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll further down the path, but you just work hard, and gift of perseverance. A lot of tools right now. That's what a I'm lot of tools. Yeah. Yeah. Use them. Be the, be the trailblazer. Get out there, make it work for you. Turn it into something. Really, really make that happen. Yeah. You know? It's awesome. Yeah, it really is. The gateway to entry is... Yeah, man. We'll, we'll be, you're going to be up here in a couple years. You'll be doing it with us. There you go. Um, yeah, anyone else? One more question. One more question, and then we got to go. All right. You want to do lightning rounds? Let's do a couple. Let's do these three, okay? Right. Go Spider-Man. Uh, I was going to ask, how did you guys feel when you first got offered the role right. of um, Toby, Shikamaru, and Rockley? Well, when I got offered Toby, I said maybe Mike, Mike or somebody else should have it. And when they said Rock Lee, I said, well, I'm already doing Shikamaru. No, it's, it was awesome. We didn't know the show. I didn't know it anyway. Uh, went in, they, they had pick three sides and go inside. I, always, I took Naruto as one of the sides because that's the name of the show. I thought that guy's going to be getting paid more. So I went Naruto, and then I, for whatever reason, I grabbed Choji and I grabbed Shikamaru. And those were my three that I went into audition with. A couple weeks later, they called me back and said, would you want to play Shikamaru? And I was, which, which guy was that again? <laughs> you know, and it was like, oh, the lazy guy. Oh, the surfer dude. That was because that's how I was doing it in the beginning. And I said, great, absolutely. And um, so that, that was, it was, it was fantastic. Lightning round. Yeah. I was super excited. It was awesome. Uh, I'll tell you more later. <laughs> come to the come to our booth. That's Next one. What, what's your question? Have you ever done hammer points uh, as if you're given a translate script? Uh, the, you're the purest translator guy. Uh, it, and we we never. So when we go into the studio, the scripts already been translated for us, um, and it's based loosely on what the Japanese uh, have like given as a template, and then American kind of directors, writers, will fine tune it into kind of more American speak. Because you know, like if you do a Google Translate, it's like, it's pretty pretty good. Like you get the idea, but it's not how maybe you would speak as an American or as the character. And so then they kind of fine tune. And then as the show goes on, they start to really start to write for, how would you want to say that? Or how would Rockley do that? Or say and that. at the end of the day, it's all approved by the original creators of it. So don't yell at us, yell at 
the original Japanese company that made it because they go, yep, that's good enough, or that's what they their trans their, or they hired the translators and the or the translators just went, yeah, throw up their hands and say, uh, who had a question? Anyone else? Last one? Yeah, last one. Yeah, right. So the the uh, when when you do a show, uh, what you're doing is imagining based on the size, shape, gender, species, age, uh, you know, uh, uh, potentially like geographical uh, location, et cetera, of a given character. And so you generate a, uh, this idea of like, what's the pitch of the voice? What's the, what's the tempo of the voice? What's the cadence of the voice? What's the texture and the sound of the voice? You kind of play around with all of that. And then, yeah, the tricky part is what if you have, as I did, weeks, sometimes months between sessions, right? So I, you know, doing, you know, what? I don't believe it kidding right is then all of a sudden thank you and then all of a sudden I uh, you know I would go away and I, I, six months would go by and I'd be like oh I guess that was it I guess that weird character that I did a couple of days of work with is done now and that job is finished and meanwhile I'm sniffing around for other work elsewhere and then I would get a call back and this happened again and again and again over the course of eight years you know come back you know we got a couple more episodes for you we're doing a video game we're doing a movie whatever and what they always do, they have a, a library of sound that they then, they'll play you reference from your original thing. And everybody, me, you, everybody, can uh, mimic themselves very well. So even though years have gone by or months or whatever it's been, you hear yourself do it again and uh, just leave it to Toby, okie dokie, it kind of pops right back in. Also, having a catchphrase actually works. Because yeah. then you go, what's the voice, what's the placement, how's it going to sound? And then you go, what a drag. Oh, man. <laughs> Now I can just talk like this all day because I know exactly where it goes in my throat, how it feels, what it's supposed to sound like. So having a, um, a catchphrase like that helps a lot. I, I swear to God, every time I go into the booth, I'll start off with, first thing as we're doing some mic check, I'll just go, what a drag, what a drag. Is that it? Is that it? Okay, that's it. I can feel it. Yeah, same thing. Same thing. I mean, I do, you know, I'm the handsome devil of the hidden leaf, you know, or leaf hurricane, and then you're, you're in the pocket, you know, you're, you're there. Let's give a hand for Brian Thomas.